All right, you guys, this is Ross. We have a really special treat to share with you guys on the channel today. This is a, a fruit that we're gonna review for you guys. It's called the pawpaw, and it's actually the largest fruit native to North America. Um, it's the closest thing that we have here in a northern climate to something like a banana or a mango. Uh, because it is in the Anona family, and uh, most of the Anona family you can find in the tropics. Um, and this one, just I guess over the uh, time of evolution, has made its way further north, um, evolved, adapted to colder locations, and it grows really well in the large majority of North America. In fact, you can find this fruit native here. and. Um, what I had planned to do um, was actually go today. I was going to go to a local park. Believe it or not, there is a park in Philadelphia. I will not uh, reveal the location um, that has a wild pawpaw patch. And I have a feeling a lot of people actually know about it in the area. And um, I was going to go today because today is really the week. It's really the first week of September. This is really about the time that you would see some pawpaws ripe um, in this part of the, the country, in this part of the world. So I figured I'd go over to the park, I'd get myself a harvest, we'd do a little bit of a scouting, see what the deal is. Um, I actually just stumbled upon them walking through the park one day uh, this year. And I said I'd come back and I, I just, um, I decided against it at least today Maybe I'll go in the next couple of days because my friend Bill, um, my friend Bill, I think he's in Missouri. I always forget where he lives, but he uh, sent me some pawpaws in the mail. And it's one of those fruits that I'm surprised he was even able to send me in the mail because like the fig, like the strawberry, like different fruits that are very soft, it is a soft fruit. It doesn't ship well. Um, it bruises easily. Obviously, it's not that attractive. I mean, look at this thing, you know. Um, it also ripens quite quickly. You can even freeze this fruit, and it'll continue to ripen in the freezer. Um, it's not a fruit that lasts very long, um, even in a processed state. So you really have to um, grow it yourself or find a wild patch that you can harvest from. Um, in order to get this fruit. You're never gonna find it in the store or you gotta know somebody, I guess. Um, it's a fruit that is gaining really a lot of popularity and I wanna show you guys my trees because I actually am growing it myself. We'll look at my trees. We haven't looked at them in, in a little bit here, um, but they are, I think, either five or six, this is either their fifth or their sixth year since I planted them. And that's a long time, guys. That, um, it's not a tree that you can plant and get a quick investment off of right away. They take a while to get established. Um, usually when you get them, they're, they're smaller trees. And depending on how you plant them, it could take even longer. So I made the mistake actually of planting mine in shade. And I would just highly recommend that you guys actually put them in full sun. Um, it is an understory plant and that's where you will find it in nature. but. Believe it or not, it will be more productive. It will um, do its thing in full sun. And that's a, really a myth that uh, ought to be dispelled. In fact, I know I've read uh, Neil Peterson has actually said that himself. So I don't necessarily know too many other people that are more savvy about the pawpaw than Neil Peterson. But um, here we have two varieties that I'm gonna taste for you guys. One is the, um, is it the sunflower, uh, I forget the name of it exactly, but it's a self-pollinating pawpaw. So you only need one. Most pawpaws you need two, but this one here apparently is self-pollinating. Um, and I believe it's sunflower is the name of it, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong on that. I forget, I'm just blanking on the name. The other one we have, is just wild seedlings that Bill grows. 
And you can do that with this fruit, which is pretty interesting compared to other fruit trees, is that the wild form of this, here's actually the money shot here, guys. Look at that. This really is creamy, like custard, like a banana, vanilla, mango, a little bitterness in there, banana flavors. Um, it makes a really great dessert. And um, my friend Bill was telling me he made um, he made a Paul Paul peanut butter pizza. Obviously not with uh, not with sauce, red sauce and cheese, but a dessert pizza with peanut butter and Paw Paw. I saw a photo of it, it looked incredible. Um, but let's try this. I, 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 uh, that is one of the things, by the way, we'll, we'll get back to that in a minute. That is one of the things you can do with this one, with this fruit tree, because it has large seeds in it that I'll show you in a minute. But here's some of the flesh. Let's get a taste. Mmm. It's very, very good. Um, if you love fruit, you're going to love this. And I've had some of the other anonas, by the way. Um, some of the other anonas that this is related to, as an example, is the sugar apple, like the cherimoya, the uh, adamoya, different types of anonas that you can find. Um, and you really, you really just eat this like a spoon. But, like, like it is custard. I mean, it's that crazy. It's that creamy. Um, it's like eating pudding in a way. Um, and I would say that versus the sugar apple, I think it was the cherimoya or the adamoya that I've tasted prior. And it's not exactly the same as this. This is quite different. Um, so if you're growing one and you're thinking about growing the other, maybe you live in a place you can grow both. That's possible. I'd consider it. I'd, uh, I'd definitely consider it. Um, anyway, here's the flesh. And what you'll notice is that they have some seeds in it. And there's these big black seeds. Let's, um, let me get you guys just the seed. It isn't that difficult to eat around the seed, by the way. And I would say this thing's almost an inch in length. And what you can do with these seeds, because there's so many of them, um, you can plant this, you can cold stratify this. I think you just put it in the, free, in the fridge or maybe, I think you put it in the fridge for a couple months. You may have to even score the, the seed. There's a whole process with this, but it's very possible, uh, even just throughout nature, nature does this naturally. I'm sure you could just leave a bunch of seeds on the ground throughout the winter time. Um, and it might actually, uh, some of them may germinate for you. So you could start yourself a pawpaw patch. At the very least, you could use these seeds and grow rootstock. Now, the seedlings here, as we're gonna taste in a minute, the smaller ones I was told are seedlings. And they don't taste all that different for the most part. There are some differences, slightly in the flavor, in the level of bitterness, maybe in the sugar content. But the main real big difference between them is actually in the, um, um, this one smells a bit funny, but the main difference is actually in the, the flesh to seed ratio. So what Neil Peterson did for the most part was, you know, plant a whole bunch of seedlings and trial them over a period of time and figure out really which ones had the the most flesh to seed ratio and therefore now there's a bunch of named varieties of pawpaw that you can find that have a much larger size um, with more flesh to them let's try this one this one i don't think ripened properly so I'm not going to eat this one. I think this one, it may have fermented. Yeah, 
think that one may have fermented. It is tough, guys, sending these things in the mail. I mean, this one here doesn't feel all that soft, so I'm not even going to bother, I think. And I guess it's possible that this is a seedling. I don't remember at this point what Bill had sent me because there was one that came in the mail that didn't make it. And it split and I just said, well, too bad. But the smaller ones are the seedlings, the larger ones are the named variety. And when they're in the mail for this long, I mean, what, what can you possibly expect, you know? This one's good. Again, I don't know if this is sunflower. It's sunflower. That's what it's called. That's the name of the uh, pawpaw here. I don't know if it's sunflower or if it's a seedling, but regardless, it's really good. And that was kind of my hope here was to really try a bunch of these seedling versus name variety and really tell if there was a big difference in flavor. I've been kind of trying to work, you know, really try to figure that out. Um, I asked a friend of mine, Ed Powers, maybe some of you guys have heard of Ed. He uh, also grows figs and he grows these pawpaws. He loves them. He brings actually pawpaws to the fig festival at Staten Island every year. And he lets people try them. Uh, to kind of spread the joy of this fruit. And believe it or not, uh, I talked to him who's, he's tried many, many varieties. And in short, he doesn't really believe there's a whole lot of difference in the flavor. So I know what some of you guys are thinking. That's probably a question that's gonna come up. And unfortunately, I don't have a great answer personally, but he has tried many varieties and uh, I don't think he ever came to a conclusion that said, you know, it's worth growing all these different varieties because they taste so different. It's actually a really good fruit, guys. Um, honestly, it's one of my favorites now. I tried this originally, I think Big Bill was nice enough to send me home with some. Actually, Ed Powers, I think, was the first one that ever let me try a pawpaw. This was years ago. And that was awesome. That was a great experience. And then Big Bill, I think, had uh, let me try some. And uh, now I've gotten them from uh, another friend, Bill, of mine. It seems like I need to get more friends with the name Bill. But these are my pawpaw trees right here. In fact, I actually have two in the same hole. I thought that might be a decent idea because you need um, pollination. I didn't want to have two trees take up so much space, so I decided to put them in the same hole and they would grow together. And actually it's worked out pretty well so far. Uh, there are two named varieties. I don't remember, I think one is mango and I think one is like Pennsylvania golden. If I'm not mistaken, um, they have done pretty well this year. The last two years, they really started to take off. And for whatever reason, I could never get them going. This is a very shady spot, although it is the afternoon. The sun's setting on the west side of the house. Um, it does get some afternoon sun. Uh, it does get about five-ish hours a day. That, but that's it because if you look up here's a shade tree this is the morning sun and then it goes to midday another shade tree more midday then towards the afternoon we start getting over here and then now we're past another shade tree um, so it's a um, it's a shame I guess in a sense that this tree is over here and not somewhere else 
and I didn't sort of make the mistake five years ago when I planted these. Um, but um, they're coming along. They're getting finally themselves dug in here. And I think there's just a big requirement in the beginning for them to just get themselves established, uh, establishing their root system. The root systems are very fibrous, I find, and quite shallow. So what you should do is actually, I have some comfrey around the plants. And the comfrey has done a really great job because this whole area of the yard, this we created a berm here to construct this fence. And when I was a kid, I remember going to the store, we got some really crappy soil and just basically created a, a berm here. Um, and we did it ourselves. I remember it was a lot of work that day. And essentially, I know that the soil here in this location is horrible. Combined with the fact that we're under pretty much two shade trees that are very old, have roots everywhere, um, you really got to improve the soil, you know, for some of your trees, especially in these locations. I've spent a lot of time with these plums. Um, I put a lot of mulch in these locations year after year, really building this up. And the comfrey I find really, really helps. I don't know what it is. I know that when you chop and drop the comfrey, obviously that's great. Um, we just did actually a little bit of a chop and drop today. I still have plenty more, but something about the comfrey just growing near whatever it is you want to grow, it seems to help really significantly. So um, at least here in my yard, I heard somebody say something recently about comfrey and what it can do to clay soil. I don't know if there's much truth to that, but apparently it improves the clay soil just by having it in the ground. Um, so weird thought, but maybe that is, there is some truth to that based off of what I experience here. And, um, you know, I've just been basically with the comfrey here, right underneath these trees is a chop and drop. A couple times a year, chop and drop. And this stuff, in addition to growing here, and, and I've also fed this, these trees, with some organic fertilizer. I don't water them, rarely ever water them. I maybe water them my first year. But uh, they have done really well, and they're actually continuing to grow, which is very surprising, because normally at a certain time of the year, they just stop growing. And that has um, happened really since, really for the first four or five years since I've had these trees here. But you can tell they're putting out some growth now, um, even now in September, which is uh, quite strange, I find. So in a sense, they're doing really well. I mean, that's, I think, the moral of the story. Um, you can prune them, but they are mostly self-pruning. I know Michael Judd, I think his name is, wrote a book on Paw Paw recently, and he was talking about his trees. He actually uh, does some pruning on his. So, you know, it's not like you can't prune them. There's a lot of myths and things about these, these trees. One other thing I want to mention, and I asked this to a little bit of a pawpaw expert um, not too long ago during cutting season. I want to find out if anybody has information, what is the most optimal soil temperature for the pawpaw? Um, is it better to plant the pawpaw higher, above grade, below grade? Do they like a lot of water? There's a lot of soil requirements soil uh, conditions that I'm just not familiar with. You can really easily tell with things like my apples, my stone fruits, um, pears, they really like this climate. And um, in, the, in the sense that you can, they don't mind a whole lot of water. They like moist soil, right? Rather have more water than less water with those for the most part um, in, ter in terms of their soil. And they also don't mind a cooler soil. They'll continue to grow even when the, the soil is a bit colder. Um, whereas because this is an anonia, anona, um, and how this is really has its roots in a tropical species, 
I imagine it's kind of like the fig. It's kind of like the pomegranate. It's kind of like the persimmon in a way, in that it's more of a subtropical tree that deserves a warmer spot in your yard um, with a warmer soil. And um, probably plant it a bit higher above grade. You know, if I'm going to do this all over again, which I will, you know, we're not going to be here on this property forever. So as an example, those pawpaws, um, they're not going to transplant well, probably. They're definitely not going to transplant well. Is it even worth digging them up and transplanting them? I don't know. Am I better off just starting off fresh? That's a good question. And in this new orchard that I eventually get, um, how would I do this? How would I plant the pawpaw? That's a, a interesting little thing that I have been thinking about for a while. So thank you guys here for watching this video on the pawpaw. It is a wonderful, wonderful fruit. I think there's been a lot of people who have been really interested in this and it's been great to see. And uh, I'm kind of making the same mission of mine for the fig and the persimmon but it's good to see that this fruit has already started to take off in popularity. We'll see you guys soon, all right? Take care. We'll uh, catch you guys for tomorrow's video.